Well, good morning, people. Um, thank you for showing up here, uh, community members and um, students and uh, other projects that were developed here. Uh, it's been a great honor to uh, work with these team members and stuff. Uh, we have two high school students and two possible engineers here. I'm just a dinosaur, probably on the last stage of everything. So it was really educational. Uh, we created a system that hasn't been created yet, so hopefully you guys can be able to benefit with some of the results and stuff that we got off of these things. Um, so with that, I'd like to have uh, Trinidad. Right. Uh, this is Joe, and this is Cora, and Ford did Lance. There in Lance. And it was really impressive to have the high school kids with such knowledge. I mean, when I was in high school, I think we still still doing the dinosaur stuff and with their technology and abilities with computers was totally amazing and the thought process and we kind of learned a little bit from them and I'm sure they learned a lot from us so with that I'll have uh, Trinidad take over with some of the... Alright, so slide, intros, so I'll start with uh, what we did, um, we built and tested uh, three different solar thermal designs um, just to kind of have like a variety where we could assess the differences and materials to come to different conclusions based upon the data we collected um, during the several weeks. We have three designs here. This is the flat panel uh, water heater and it's an eight by four piece of half inch plywood with one by four sidings along the side there. Um, this left side is copper piping, it's 50 feet of copper piping, half inch diameter center. And uh, basically, you can't see it on the, uh, from the side, but behind this there's two five gallon buckets full of water. Uh, intake from here, circling inwards, and you know, as it's circling in, inwards, at a velocity of, doesn't really matter, but anyway, it was just pumping, pumped in there through a submersible pump, <coughs> an 8.4 watt pump, and it going to the center, and you know, as it's circulating, it's being warmed by the sun's radiation. Um, this is 50 foot copper, and this is 100 foot of irrigation piping. Uh, this one is the concave, like octo octagonal design, where we put uh, eight wedges, you know, two two pieces of wedges. I think, like a what is the angle on those? 30, 30, 30 degree angle on the mm -hmm. wedges, and still 50 foot, you know, feet of copper, half inch diameter. And same system, intake and then outlet into the same five gallon bucket. So. Uh, the area of the collector on all three is 32 inches by 32 inches. That's uh, 1,024 square square inches. So you know it's absorbing a good deal of uh, energy. Um, so good surface area. Why we did it? Uh, just to learn new things. Uh, we're all we all have an interest in renewable energy, and you know. We all consider it to be the future. It is effectively heating water that's being circulated through the uh, efficiency of the collector. It's just uh, power out over power in, which is heat flux times area of collector, and then the solar constant, which is about, it fluctuates, but it's about 1,000 watts per square meter, and so that's what we use is 1,000 watts. Um, the total energy that was accumulated over a six hour period within the water uh, was about 2.76 megajoules, which is a good deal of uh, energy. Uh, total power was about 0.766 kilowatt hours, and then the efficiency of the copper tubing, 50 foot of the copper tubing, was about 17%. Uh, you know, copper is a good thermal conductor, and then the irrigation was just like a plastic tubing, but you know, good efficiency, 26%. And uh, wood, some piping, some sand, that sort of thing. It was nothing too expensive. Um, the savings we we made uh, was about so search uh, the kilowatt hours for eight hours a day uh, on the pump. That's only electric electrical charge. We, 
we we have for the entire project would be about you know look at this it's like really small really small and then an annual price would be two two fifty a year you know so that's like nothing and then I compared it to a Home Depot Depot electrical water heater using twelve kilowatts per day and you know we came up with an annual of four hundred thirty dollars a year so the difference was four hundred thirty five dollars oops. And then the total annual savings was, you know, 150. So it's like 50% of the total cost of the solar thermal water heater. Um, so, you know, it's definitely something that if you have the money, you should. Now we're off to methods and results and goes with you. Thanks, Ernie. So our original idea was to build one one flat system that had the copper tubing and the plastic tubing to get a kind of a comparison between the two different materials and um, so the plastic tubing we wound that up that's that's a hundred foot section right there uh, and we got to the copper and that was a little problematic we couldn't I don't know if you've ever tried to bend copper tubing by hand um, you can destroy it pretty easily uh, so we couldn't get it tightly wound like we did with plastic. So we went with just a 50-foot section that we could get about the same same area covered with some spacing in between the coils. And just to kind of think outside the box, we decided to build this other little system that has kind of a concave shape and. Um, it was, uh, you know, it was, it was not easy to build, but I think it turned out pretty well. Um, so these are the, the two products side by side, or the three systems really. The, the concave one um, sits by itself, and the, the other two sit on one sheet so we can cover them all at the same time. Uh, let's see. Then we decided to put sand in it for some, some thermal mass to see what that would do. Um, we definitely saw a little bit of a rise in all three systems with the sand in it. So that sand would heat up and we had a lot of clouds coming through and uh, every time the clouds would come by the solar insulation would drop dramatically but the sand would continue to radiate heat to the tubing. There's a good shot of our end product. We have our uh, solar insulation meter measuring the insulation. At, at, at every time we take a measurement of the water, we get the solar insulation as well. We've got to play with the thermal imaging camera. I thought I'd throw that in there. It's kind of cool. But you can see, you know, this crosshairs shows the, the degrees, 122 degrees on that, that collector. Pretty warm. So here's some data. So we got the this is the copper line, the blue line. The yellow is the, the plastic, and this gray line is the secondary axis, and that's the solar insulation throughout the day. So you can kind of see how it was kind of all over the map. This one that you got the gray line is, is, well, the gray line is the ambient air outside, and then the blue line is the water in the, in the collector. And this is the concave one with the sand. And you really see this red line is the solar insulation throughout that day, and it's just all over the place. But still, steady incline. And now I'm going to hand it over to Lance. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. As a sub-project, I uh, built a one-way valve and 3D printed it, um, so here it is, and it uh, goes in between, the, it goes right off the pump, it's going into the, into the collector so that it doesn't have backflow, so it just pushes the door out of the way, and then when water tries to come back, it closes it. Yeah, 3D printed that, you'll see that later. You like it too. Uh, It'll be out there in our oh, yeah. presentation later. Alright, so I'm gonna do this a little bit. Thank you, Ed. Um we just on a BF the 
Happy for our team. We just want to thank Dr. Barbayton, Tim Chester, Jonathan Bow, Wally Higgins, and any other facility for the faculty for putting together this practical and helping and giving input to our projects and for giving us this experience. Thank you guys for coming. And now we're just going to open for questions. You've mentioned thermal insulation several times. What does that mean? So the thermal insulation is, um, that is the amount of, of solar radiation hitting the earth at any given point. That's usually measured, measured in watts per square meter, which is kind of an average of a thousand watts per square meter that you use for like calculations and stuff. But if you know, a little bit of clouds will drop it down from a thousand to two fifty. You know, that's a significant drop. Solar thermal. <laughs> Take shape. So how's your 3D, uh, your yeah, NCAD? All right, man. Let me know when you, when you get that thing fired up, will you? Oh, yeah. Thanks. So I'm going to just I'm gonna go over some of these um, power equations with, with Austin. You want to get on that a little bit? And that's, uh, so I think this is something that... Side. There we go. Um, if that looks fine. Yeah. 